In this video, we're going to talk about the direct pathway through the basal nuclei, implications to Parkinson's disease, and the main drug used to treat Parkinson's disease. So let's get right into it. Starting up here at the motor cortex, so we're in that precentral gyrus, maybe a little bit of the supplemental motor cortex. It's going to send this initiation plan. We want to initiate a movement. And that's what the direct pathway does is it starts a movement. <clears throat> so it's going to send some like crude instructions down here to the basal nuclei, which include the caudate nucleus, the thalamus, the subthalamic nuclei, the lentiform nucleus, which individually include the putamen, globus pallidus externus, and globus pallidus internus. So the first initial neuron is a glutaminergic neuron, so it's excitatory. It's going to excite the neuron that it synapses with. So it's going to send information to the caudate nucleus as well as the putamen. So collectively, that's the striatum. <clears throat> and we're going to kind of focus on this putamen pathway. And whenever it, it releases glutamate here, it's going to release and communicate with a GABAergic neuron. So GABA is an inhibitory neuron, gamma aminobutyric acid. And so when it, it stimulates this inhibitory neuron, you're going to get a lot of GABA release at this synapse, at the globus pallidus internus with another, another GABAergic neuron. And so th that's going to inhibit this one. So this one is inhibited. It's not, it's, it's not going to release a lot of glue, uh, GABA. So when it doesn't release much here, that frees up this neuron, this excitatory neuron, from inhibition. So it releases that inhibition on this neuron so this is stimulatory coming from the thalamus back up to the cortex. So that's going to that's gonna stimulate or initiate a movement. But you kind of need this pathway enhanced to really get that stimulation going, that initiation of a movement going. So it has to have this other excitatory neurotransmitter, which is dopamine, to be released from the substantia nigra pars compacta. It's going to come all the way up, and it's going to go to the striatum, and what it's going to do is it's going to also stimulate these GABAergic neurons along with that glutaminergic neuron. So you're going to have an enhanced effect on this whole system. And you're going to enhance that strength coming back up to the motor cortex. And that's going to get your motor movement initiated. And that's one thing that Parkinson's patients suffer from is they have trouble getting started, whether it's walking or, or whatever. So... How do you treat it? You have to replace the dopamine. These, these uh, dopaminergic neurons get, uh, they get destroyed in this disease, so you have to replace the dopamine. You can't just take dopamine orally and expect it to get to the brain because it doesn't pass the blood-brain blood -brain barrier. So what you have to do is you have to give it a precursor to it. So dopamine is what's called a monoamine neurotransmitter. It's also categorized as a catecholamine. So let's talk about that process because we have a chemical structure here because that's where you have kind of have to go to understand that. So it starts out as an amino acid. This amino acid is tyrosine and like all amino acids it has an amino group and acid group. So it has an amino group and it has this carboxylic acid. It all, all of them have one uh, bond, covalent bond with the hydrogen and then the R group is what makes one amino acid different from another. So with tyrosine, it has this methylene group, this benzene ring, and this hydroxyl group. So one step up from that is a, a molecule known as L-DOPA. And so an enzyme that acts on this is called tyrosine hydroxylase. And it will add a tyrosine right here. And that takes you to what's called L-DOPA. And there's a drug called Cinemet that has L-DOPA, but it also has another, um, it, it also has carbidopa in it, which inhibits the peripheral conversion of this L-DOPA to dopamine. So there's another enzyme that takes this L-DOPA to dopamine, and it's called uh, L-DOPA decarboxylase. So L-DOPA decarboxylase takes off this carboxyl group and replaces it with a hydrogen. 
And when that happens, you have dopamine. You don't want that to happen in the peripheral uh, system because then do, you know it converts to dopamine and then dopamine doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier. But if you can block uh, L-dopa decarboxylase peripherally with carbidopa, then that levodopa, the L-dopa, can cross the blood-brain barrier, get in, and then the neurons can take them that last step, it can take it from L-dopa to dopamine, and it can really kind of mask this problem for a while, and then it kind of dies out after time, which is kind of sad because this is a progressive neurological disorder. So I hope that helps you understand a little bit about how movement's initiated, how it ties into Parkinson's disease, and then how the drug works to alleviate the symptoms.